Hi, my name's Dom, and today I'm going to show you how to do the Nissan steering rack uh, slash subframe modification, commonly used in drifting, to eliminate binding, which is a common problem uh, in drifting. Binding is usually an issue found in drift cars um, due to excessive lock, uh, lock that's much greater than factory. Um, there's a few ways to reduce or eliminate this. Number one is this rack modification. Number two is your setup. And number three is not have as much lock. But obviously in drifting you want as much lock as possible to stop you from spinning out if possible. Um, so yeah, that's what this mod's for. Now, my uh, drift car here is a Nissan 180SX running an RB25. So it's got an RB25 cross member um, and quite a few little modifications. As you can see, this outside wheel here, outside because it's pointing to the left and um, yeah, it's on full counter steer right now. Um, anyway, we have in here some cut and shut knuckles, Superman knuckles as I like to call them. Uh, we've got a extended low control arm. We have Nissan Maxima tie rods and D-Max tie rod ends um, and D-Max D -Max caster arms. Uh, I think my lower control arms are extended by 40mm to give nice uh, wheel clearance and we have BC coilovers here, just the cheapo BCs but they seem to do the job pretty well. Um, okay, now as we were saying, wheel is at full lock. As you can see here, it's binded right now. Doesn't want to come back. Now, this is in the air, so there's no pressure on it at all, and it does not want to come back. This is your binding, which, when a car is under load and under pressure, it makes it extremely hard to bring it back. Now, fortunately for me, when I was driving this the other week, uh, it wasn't too bad and I was able to yank it back past this point of no return. It did actually return. Um, I was lucky because the setup uh, is running reasonably high caster and I was able to eliminate most of the binding effect which is caused by, as you can see here, this arm here is on an angle to the steering rack there. So the steering rack here is straight and we have the tie rods here pointing forwards so it's past your center line ideally what you want is for this all to be straight so if I actually yank this back now and we go to straighter here we can get that a little bit straighter Ideally, that's how you want your steering rack all the time. So, this modification we're about to do will hopefully bring that all back in line. Right, come under the car here. So, what we're going to do is chop where your steering rack, uh, steering rack here mounts, and we're going to move it 20 mil forward. That's the basic effect. So, what that will do is bring all of this in line when it's on full lock so effectively this will be somewhere around about here giving us a straighter line and hopefully completely eliminating our binding that's about it okay so what you're going to need for this job is a grinder uh, cutting discs grinding disc and like a buffing sort of pad here uh, and good old welder. The other thing that you uh, might also want to consider, it's not uh, necessary, but uh, highly recommended, is your PPE, obviously. This thing's going to get a bit noisy and a little bit sparky and a little bit uh, UV with uh, the welding. So I'd certainly recommend a bit of your old uh, safety glasses there. Uh, some earmuffs to, for your uh, grinding and uh, cutting. Um, when we get to the welding point, obviously you're going to need a welding mask, unless you like a bit of flash burn. 
um, long sleeves. I've got my safety uh, safety uh, orange here on, just so the crackheads next door can find me and possibly offer me stolen jewellery for uh, selling crack or something. Um, just a regular around here, and obviously uh, your uh, welding gloves here, which also come in handy when you're welding, so just so you don't burn your hands and whatnot. <coughs> this is actually the first time I've done this, so with a bit of uh, research of a few pictures, I figured out how to do it. So it's quite simple, really. Take a few measurements first. So basically, all I've done. He's measured 20 mil from the end here. I've gone straight from uh, this flat part and measured 20 mil, and measured 20 mil off the end of here, both ends, and basically started cutting it out to the point where I'm able to do that. And obviously underneath. I measured 20 mil from the whole way around here and I've just cut it out as well the whole way okay as we can see here we can pull that right out now so that's basically what we're going to reuse again so effectively what we're going to do here is move this 20 mil forward so that hopefully when our car's on full lock, we have a complete straight line across here from the rack to the rack ends. And uh, yeah, when the car's on full lock, well, we're going to get it as straight as possible, eliminating the binding altogether. Actually, what I've done first here is actually wash this. Because as you can see here, on the inside it was pretty much that dirty the whole way on the outside just to make the job a little bit cleaner and simpler I gave it a nice little degrease and washed down with a hose it's a nice little idea to do that to start helps things keep a little bit cleaner um, also makes the job a little bit easier as well um, yeah so next up I'm going to give this inside a bit more of a clean because we got to weld that again and um, yeah we'll go from there the other thing I'm also going to do is buff down or grind down all these uh, original welds and uh, make it a bit easier to weld back up there, a bit neater and hopefully stronger. Okay now as you can see I have this nice little wash on the inside here, it's a bit cleaner now uh, and I've removed all the original welding points here next step here is to measure 20 mil off here I'm going to cut 20 mil off of that so that's moving the rack 20 mil forward using our original part here it should be sitting in somewhere about there uh, the other thing that I'm going to do also is as you can see on here uh, We've got double skin here, the bottom bit here being of the original cross member. I'm going to cut that off because we're going to overlap the mount here onto this bit here. So this is unnecessary, otherwise it's going to sit two or three mil higher due to that being there. So I'm going to cut that off as well. Cut that somewhere around there. Probably 20 mil out of it would be a good idea, or thereabouts. Uh, and obviously the bottom, same thing, 20 mil off this edge, moving it in. Okay, so I have this 20 mil mark here across the bottom. And across the top. And if we throw this in, you can see where it's going to sit, roughly. I'm having a bit of trouble here because a bit of a thicker end here. But basically on this end here, you can see we're going to need to shave this down a bit. 
for it to get in there, which shouldn't be an issue. And I've also taken that double layer out so that will fit nicely over the top there once it's all in there. Okay, as you can see, we've got this cut out pretty nicely. Um, seems to be fitting in there pretty good by all accounts. Uh, as you can see here though, haven't taken quite enough out of that bottom skin which isn't allowing this to butt right up against the cut. And also if we have a look up here, probably well, we just need to take a little bit more off both of these edges of the actual uh, steering rack mount and underneath it's not looking too bad either nice little cut now we're going to weld these up obviously bottom and top and I'm thinking that the two little off cuts that we cut off before the top and the bottom we're going to use these as support braces over the top and bottom, like so-ish. That shouldn't interfere with the sample or anything like that. So um, yeah, we'll just add a little bit of extra strength over my bird shit welds. Um, so yeah, don't throw them out. We're going to reuse them. Okay, as you can see, we're almost ready for welding here. Uh, everything here is all cut out nicely and butting up pretty well. There's a bit of a gap there, but that's not too much of an issue. There should be enough strength in the rest of it uh, for that not to worry us too much. We go over to the bottom side, and once again, looking pretty good along this line too. Um, if you, you can see here that I've marked out this in white. This needs to be cut extended a bit due to the bolt hole for the steering rack obviously we still need to get a bolt in there so I'm just going to cut that little section out there just to allow for that obviously we've moved everything 20mm forward so 20mm would be ideal but that should give more than enough as obviously we've got the uh, second part of the skin there as well of the uh, uh, cross member and just going to take off a couple of little dabs there as well to make things a bit neater and hopefully a bit easier um, it's a bit of un unnecessary metal as well um, so yeah we're almost ready to go for welding okay now we're pretty much ready for welding right now um, in fact we are ready for welding but I uh, just thought I'd go over a couple of little things okay just checking centering whether the I've cut this off centre and it's still centre. Uh, we can have a look at these original bolt holes and the two spot welding points here. They should be fairly close. It looks like with these two here I'm slightly off centre to the right by well, maybe two or three mil. I'm not overly fussed about that. It's nothing that can't be uh, taken out uh, with the uh, wheel alignment or what have you, centering the, uh, the cross member or the steering rack I should say um, so yeah it's not too bad at all the other thing I just wanted to uh, bring to your attention so we look here measure this up here we've got like a constant 35 millimeter across here between the two ends here going off two uh, end walls there it's about 35 when it's all butted up obviously that's what you want to be looking at so that's how I've measured that and that all seems pretty good okay here we go we are all welded hello as you can see a nice little flip around uh, a little bit messy on the back here but managed to make it work and uh, just clean up those welds a little bit and put in those little braces that we cut out earlier 
and um, that should give it all the strength it needs really. I'm taking the liberty of spot welding a couple of the factory lines just a little bit, give it a bit more strength. Um, but yeah, not too bad on the bird chip welds this time around. Welding's get a little bit better, I think. Okay, so here we are with our welds cleaned up and our little brace made out of the bit we cut out. So there's our 20 mil that we cut out going back in just as a little brace there, give it a bit of support. If you're confident with your weld, it's probably not necessary, but seeing as I'm not an engineer or a welder or a fabricator of any sort, I thought I'd give myself a bit of peace of mind by putting that in. The bottom as well, cleaned up, ready to rock and roll. We'll put another one in there. Once again, just for a bit of peace of mind for my own safe. safety and sake, I guess. Okay, and here we have the finished product. That extra little brace there for my peace of mind. Um, as you can see, let's move forward 20 mil. Now, realistically, um, if you're overly concerned about your welding, then uh, a better brace to do for this top section would be like a sort of a U brace, keeping it as thin as possible because you don't want to interfere with the steering rack but something that could literally slide over the top like that in a section and uh, strengthen that up and retrospectively I did actually consider putting a brace the whole way across that but my welding seems to be getting slightly better so I'm just going to go with that I think it should be fine famous last words but there you go but if you are uh, concerned about your welding and want to make it a bit stronger, a bit more rigid in the front end, in the chassis, you could brace that whole section, obviously, leaving the hole there. But yeah, put a brace across the whole thing. As far as I'm aware, this mod is uh, good for any RS chassis of the Nissan variety. It's probably good for... Um, any chassis make model that you can actually do this on at a guess but yeah there you go I don't know if I'll uh, do another one of these how-to videos I only did this one because I went to look it up and uh, on PooTube and couldn't find it so I figured I'll give anybody a how-to who's thinking about doing it so, that's my how-to. Uh, I guess uh, anything left to do now is to clean up the welds just a little bit more and get it painted and install it. But that's it. We are done.